Can you imagine harvesting wine for 25,000 bottles by hand? And if you will make a bit of wine, you will be the traitor of your country. And do you know the legend why Georgian people start drink from this wine horns? No. Okay, I will tell you. That's why I'm here. <laughs> wine and the production of wine is a very, very large part of Georgian culture. And this is exactly why we came here today. And we're going to see and explore everything around the wine production. We have a little doggy here. Hi, doggy. <laughs> Come on, Jova. Naomi, pleased to meet you. <laughs> And the last name of this family is uh, uh, Abuladze, and uh, here people know this wine cellar as a uh, wine cellar of the Abuladze family. Uh, but the official name of uh, this wine cellar is Baye's wine. Baye is uh, his daughter. So uh, traditionally in this part of Georgia, many people were making uh, wine, and this family also were making it. And uh, Baye had an idea to make a uh, business out of it, and they decided to change the, their house to the wine cellar and this business is really working because they have a really good quality wine but you will try it soon before you try it uh, try the wine first let me show you the yes. place where they are planting their grapes you can take uh, photos there okay this way guys okay okay this is the place we always find dogs everywhere i love the doggies <laughs> Give you the information about wine and winemaking here in Georgia. As you know, Georgia is a country of wine, and here in the territory of Georgia, we have more than a 500 type of grapes. But Georgian winemakers are uh, using only like 34 or 35 to prepare wine from it. And uh, you have to know also that uh, Georgian territories are very specific, and sometimes because of the climate and because of the landscape. Mm. Uh, sometimes with the type of grape which grows, for example, here in the Imereti region, uh, they won't grow maybe in Kacheti or in other places. So when you decide to be a winemaker, then you have to make some researches if the ground can take, uh, can accept the type of grape you want to grow or not. Uh, here in the Imereti region, we have uh, uh, the most uh, famous uh, type of grapes, and those are for the white one is Tsitska, Tsolik Auri and Karahuna type of grapes and for the red one uh, we have Ojaleshi, Utshanuri Sapere and Aladastori. The family, this family mm. have uh, all of these type of grapes and they are growing uh, here. Uh, and one more thing. Uh, oh, please meet Baya, the girl <laughs> whose idea was to... Welcome. Hello. I'm Baya. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Nice to meet you. Baya. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I have a bit sweet hands now because it's our third day of harvest and uh, like uh, finally we started harvesting, we get this maturity condition as well. Mm -hmm. These sweetnesses and also acidity level, which means that yeah, fortunately we will have a uh, great value after the after the crushing and getting the first juice. And what is also really interesting is that uh, the varieties we grow, and I was hearing that mm -hmm. <laughs> he was talking about that, is like uh, yeah, like has less yield, let's say. So we get about like five kilos per wines. I mean the per big wines and older ones. But um, it has really, really rich uh, minerality and also rich aromas by himself. So we always prefer to have local varieties and indigenous varieties which are growing really well in our terroirs and in our soil. So and, yeah, since 2015 to now, our main vision, me, my sister and brother, we were aiming to have this uh, new lands, new towers, these new 18 hectares, two tractors. And <laughs> they are conquering more and more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, to kind of create the possibility for also aging wine, doing different products like pet nuts or still wine. So, so after five years, whenever you will come, you yeah. can see here. Big yeah. <laughs> there will be an empire. Yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Bye, yeah. Yep, Baya Empire. Your name is Baya. Yeah, thank you. Wine name is Baya's wine yeah, cellar because yeah, yeah. she's Baya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, thanks again for coming. 
and enjoy with the sweet grapes. But the first several rows are all, always in the vineyards, the most damaged from the sun burning. But whenever you go inside, you can see like a lot of healthy yellow sweet grapes. So please enjoy. Wow. And yeah. Yeah, before you go, I yeah. forget how many bottles you produced on this year. Yeah. Uh, the last year we had about 25,000 bottles, but fingers crossed we will have a bit more uh, this year. So. Wow, 25,000! 25, yeah, nice. <laughs> it's like, oh. <laughs> well, there's 25,000. Yeah. It doesn't. Uh, it, it sounds very big number, uh -huh. but uh, mm -hmm. when you are producing the wine and when you are exporting it, it's it is not a real big number because uh, this family is exporting uh, the wine in many countries. And the reason why are not uh, they exporting uh, much more, they have an opportunity to do it, but it will affect the quality of the wine. So, first of all, they think about the quality of the wine and that's why they have this kind of small amount and time after time, step after step, they are growing this place, they are growing their business and uh, we hope that um, several years later they will pro they will produce more than they are producing right now. Wow. So you can go guys, take a yeah. photos uh, <laughs> and Thank after you. this place I will show you the wine cellar where they are having this uh, old how, how Georgian the, Basel Cuevis yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Amazing. So um, apparently there were some excavations made ex excavations <laughs> were made not too long ago actually I'm gonna walk through the wine yard with you so you can have a look around anyway there were some excavations made here from what I understood in 2012 right 2012 yeah um, really incredible history behind this vineyard there was actually just recently a movie that was produced and made here by a German film company um, this is just mind-blowing experience i'm so excited to go in here and try some of these grapes as well wine the tradition of wine as naomi told you there at the start of this video it is so ingrained in georgia and georgia is actually the first place to bring wine to humanity which is just crazy exactly so um, there were excavations made around 2012 from what i understood and uh, they found out that here in Georgia they found relics of the production of wine that is that are 8,000 years old. So um, from what it looks like right now, Georgia is the country to basically invent wine. Um, which is absolutely insane to think that this country has been producing wine for 8,000 years. And uh, yeah, as you can see, there's an overflow of wine grapes here everywhere and the woman even said that we were allowed to try some of the wine grapes which I'm gonna do obviously because I always have to try everything mm. oh, very sweet yeah. mm. the wine is super sweet here you want to give it a try as well absolutely oh my god Mm-hmm. So sweet. Very, very... Mm. Not even a hint of sourness to that grape. It's amazing. We're literally surrounded by it as well. It's gonna make for some incredible pictures, I think, as well, for the gram, I think. <laughs> for sure, for sure. And uh, last year, this wine yard produced 25,000 bottles of wine. Um, which they said actually is not that much. Um, I was like, oh my god, 25,000 bottles of wine, that sounds like a lot, but apparently it's not so much and they're really trying to expand the wine production here, um, which they were, which they are probably going to be very successful and they just got a lot more acres here in the area and they're going to um, nurture some new wine plants around here. And each and every one of these wine plants Apparently, when they reach maturity, creates five kilograms of grapes each. This is really epic. You literally can just quite literally get lost in amongst the grapes. It's you just won't so. Be short of food, though. You will not be you short will of food. You never be short of food if you get <laughs> lost here. <laughs> but yeah, no, these uh, these vineyards just so vast and expansive. This is something else. And just to give you guys an idea of roughly where we are, we are actually in a region of Georgia that is called 
the Baghdadi region or the Baghdati region. And the tour guide made a little bit of a joke saying that they, they have their own Baghdad here in Georgia, which is amazing. Look at all that firewood as well. Amazing. And this here, this is actually really interesting. These are the vessels basically in which the people here used to produce wine and apparently still partially produce wine in. Um, so it's upside down right now. I don't know if you can see it. Um, so this entire vessel would be buried underground basically and just the top part would stick out and they would fill in um, the juiced grapes and bury it underground. And yep. then um, you have basically a constant temperature for the wine to ferment and then after a while they would basically dig it out and harvest the wine out of uh, these vessels here which I forgot the name of. Yeah I think they say <laughs> it's called a churi in eastern Georgia but I'm not too sure what western Georgia calls it. This is very interesting kind of a genius way as well of storing wine but uh, this whole area is just magnificently beautiful we're quite literally surrounded by nature. Apparently some regions here in Georgia as well use these types of vessels to store cheese, to store honey and uh, sometimes even apparently from what we heard um, if you have a burial like a family member died or something like that they would put the body into one of these uh, vessels and then bury them in, in the vessel basically which is super interesting. I've never even heard of this before. Um, so much information around here already. <laughs> Harvest the wine? Is it by hand or is it with machine? Oh. Uh, by hand. <laughs> by hand. Yeah, because like crushing by machine. Maybe we have to drive, so I get the oh, drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, I will now grab the uh, fresh juice. Just fresh the juice, and then uh, let's taste it. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Hello, doggy. <laughs> For the wine and dine shore, this is the best time to visit the wine cellar. Because oh. you can see and feel how they are making it uh, and how they care about the wine. Because, you know, uh, once my grandfather told me that uh, if you are going to be a winemaker uh, and if you will make a bad wine, you will be the traitor of your country. So all of the winemakers, not all I think, but most of the winemakers are trying to be the patriots of their country and not a traitor. So if you are making the bad wine, you are a uh, traitor of your country. Those, it's how important wow. the taste and the quality of the wine is important for the Georgian people. Well, let's join them. Can you imagine harvesting wine for 25,000 bottles by hand? Insane. A lot of work. <laughs> it's crazy. It's a juice of Solgauri. Juice? Yes. Grape juice. Grape juice. For the wine. <laughs> Not wine. Not wine. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. In Georgian, cheers is Gau Marjos. Gau Marjos. Gau Marjos. Similar to Gau Marjos. You know, Gau Marjos comes from the word victory. When Georgian people were greeting each other, they wished victory to each other. And it's way it became the way of say cheers as well. When we say hello, when we say cheers, we say victory. Yeah. Wow. Victory to you guys. <laughs> this is amazing taste. So this guys, is the juice, it's not the wine yet, but right it's so now, good. I will show you how our how our ancestors were pressing the grapes. <laughs> Thank you. This is very good. And then they, they are pressing it uh, by their bare foot. Uh, and uh, a little bit later they added this machine and then they were crushing it like by hand. Wow. Now you can go inside of the wine cellar this way. Yep. Yes. Oops. <laughs> okay. So here those people are having this crevice. These wine vessels, where those people are keeping uh, the wine inside, and each of it, each of them has uh, different sizes. It smells mm -hmm. like alcohol in here. <laughs> <laughs> wow! And all yeah, of them are having the different them. sizes, and it depends how much. But their name is curvy. Yeah, yeah, this is curvy. Yeah, this is curvy for wine. After they will pre 
press the grapes then they will take the juice inside of it for and they are waiting until the fermentation process ends and um, uh, before they uh, put juice inside of it uh, first they have to clean it properly because there are very small little microscopic uh, holes inside of query and the uh, bacteria love stay there so if it won't be completely uh, clean out of bacteria bacteria will affect the taste of the wine and of course it won't be as good as it must be so those people those winemakers have uh, have to be very careful to clean it and they have to work on it and uh, there is a special uh, tool uh, with this tool they were uh, they were cleaning it it's made from a tree and they were cleaning like this from the outside but uh, because uh, we live in the 21st century right now we have some technologies they have kerkel and they are cleaning uh, with a kerkel uh, wow. kerkel yes. but in yeah german thanks <laughs> germany thanks germany <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to the Germany, and uh, I was saying that uh, uh, yeah, and uh, in uh, back in a time uh, when uh, query uh, uh, the people uh, in a family always have little children. So these little children sometimes were going down there, and they were cleaning it uh, from inside. If the query was very big, children were going there, and they were. Uh, cleaning it. Now let's move here. Uh, so guys, do you know what these horns are called here in Georgia? What we call, do you know it? It's called Anzi. And uh, uh, traditionally, when we Georgians celebrate something, we always choose Tamada. Tamada is a toast master, the guy who is saying the toasts. Traditionally, first toast is for God, second is for peace, third one is for the Patriarch of Georgia, and four is depends what you celebrate. If you celebrate um, someone's birthday, you have to say the toast for him or her. And special toasts here are always told from uh, special vessels, and this kind of special vessel mostly is uh, Hansi. This horn is called Hansi, and uh, according to the legend, uh, this uh, when you will drink it, it takes several glasses, maybe five or six. Uh, when somebody will says the toast, he must drink it completely because it's impossible to put it down and if you put it down and if there will be wine inside of it, you will waste the wine. So you yeah. have to completely drink it. So and uh, you have to drink it five times or six times, depending on... Or you drink all of it at once. It depends how much they want to drink. <laughs> Alcoholics. Uh, small ones also. Oh, so they, they're all so small ones. <laughs> you don't have to empty it for every toast. Uh, or it's just no, no. All when, the this, when the toast is special, okay. uh, traditionally here people always, uh, when they say toast, it doesn't matter if they say toast with a glass or with a special vessel, they always empty the glasses, traditionally. Uh, and they always, uh, they were always emptying this uh, kind of hands mm -hmm. as well. And uh, here people say that uh, all of the all of the Georgians are always trying to empty the uh, hands because when they are putting it down like this, and they say that as many drops of the wine will fall, as many you, as many enemies you will have. So all of them are trying to empty the uh, horns. And do you know the legend why Georgian people start drink from these uh, horns? No. Okay, I will tell you. That's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, uh, many, many, not many Georgians also do not know it, I think. Uh, many, many centuries ago, we Georgians had a king who loved uh, wine so much. He had a very big competitions in the country. And about this king once heard one guy from Scandinavia and he decided to challenge Georgian king. He arrived here and uh, Georgian king accepted the challenge. But here was this kind of tradition and law. When they were uh, drinking, then when drinking the wine, uh, after drinking, then they were breaking the glasses or vessels. And um, several days later, after this challenge, there were no more vessels for <laughs> wine in the whole kingdom. It's like a fairy tale, yeah. yeah. And um, it was the turn of the Georgian king, and Georgian king saw the big bull, and he just uh, broke the horn of the bull, and he drank uh, wine from the uh, horn. And this was the very first time when the Georgian people start drink from the horns, according to this legend. Is that why Scandinavian people drink uh, meat 
out of the big, because can, like in Scandinavia, Sweden, you have the honey. About wine. Georgians, ask Georgian, but about Scandinavians, ask something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I can't speak instead of, of Scandinavian. I don't, I don't For know. For Scandinavia, really. I think it matters on the Viking era. Yeah, yeah, yeah Viking era. Yeah. We see yeah, the Viking Sweden, era. Denmark, uh, yeah, Finland popular culture. Yeah. Then we yeah. see that. And uh, do you know how long the wine stays in the yeah, vessel? Yeah, I'm going to talk about it as oh, well. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, no problem. I was going to say it right now. Oh. Uh, so, uh, as you know, you are traveling right now. You are in the west part of Georgia right now. The west part of Georgia is surrounded by the mountains. And as you know, west from uh, west Georgia is uh, uh, Black Sea. The breeze, wind, which moves uh, from the Black Sea here, uh, these mountains are holding it and this uh, affects the taste of the water, the taste of the wine. It also affects the taste of the food and it also t uh, affects the nature as well. That's why the west part of Georgia is much greener than the east one. And also the fermentation process sometimes is affected by it also. Uh, but mostly the fermentation process uh, uh, is affected by the... Um, it depends on what type of grape you have there. Uh, minimum time is like in West Georgia, the fermentation process sometimes takes uh, less than a six months, but in East part of Georgia, because the because it's more drier, sometimes it takes uh, more than a six months. But uh, the process depends uh, what kind of variety of the grape you have there. Yeah. Wow. Important bottle. This was the very first bottled wine, and I do not know when they think to open it. But wow. at this moment I am sure that they are not going to yeah. open very first their bottle. Mm -hmm. And over here we have a photo of uh, the, the family. very first bottle uh, of wine that has ever been put into a bottle. This is a family it's still there. Who is Baya? Uh, Baya is uh, the girl with the white dress. Yeah. Uh -huh. And on the right from him is uh, Wanza, her sister, in the middle is their mother, on the left is father, and on the, the left is their brother George. So guys, now you can have a seat, please. Celebrations are having like a competition phase. More and more people are mm, having competitions who will drink more and more alcohol and because of this reason at the end of the Georgian wedding sometimes <laughs> people are sleeping in their plates because they are drinking too much alcohol <laughs> so don't be a uh, modern uh, tamada whoever it will be please be an old school tamada okay. <laughs> but in English please don't ask me how it is I don't what know. is it in English? this is carrot <laughs> with walnut and with um, uh, some um, how it's called in English, this red lid. Pomegranate. 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 This is just a salad, this is just chicken, over here is a beans, and uh, esrari. Uh, this is, uh, um, uh, in, we have to ask the girl when he will arrive, I will describe <laughs> to you what it is. And uh, this one is uh, Khachapuri. Khachapuri is a Georgian traditional dish. Wow. As you know, right now you are in Imereti region and uh, this kind of, this type of Khachapuri is called Imereti Khachapuri or Imereti and Khachapuri. It's like a Georgian pizza. Uh, making, preparing, it's uh, very simple. You only need dough and inside of the dough is cheese. But in some regions, in, uh, they have their own uh, kind of khachapuri. For example, most uh, popular one is Acharyan khachapuri, which has mm -hmm. a the shape of the yes uh, sheep, and is, uh, in the middle is um, egg, yeah, which is. There are also Megralian one. There are also other ones. By the type of khachapuris, you can learn the geography of Georgia because we have many varieties. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try the khachapuri everywhere. Yeah. So, guys, please enjoy. Thank you. Well, you want to go for a white one? Or the Show red? the bottle first. This is so nice. Bala's wine. Incredible. I'm sorry to ask again, but what is the grape in the white one? Ah, no, this, there are two types of grapes inside of it. One of them is Tsitska grape and the other one is Tsolikauri. And this uh, wine is made by the mixing of these uh, two types of grapes. Wow, nice. Try the white one. Give it a try. <laughs> wine, wine glass. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> wine is wine. <laughs> My grandpa, I have a Sicilian grandpa, I'm half Sicilian. 
He always drinks out of, you know, those Nutella glasses? <laughs> you know, the ones with the minions on it mm -hmm. and stuff? That, that's what he drinks <laughs> his wine out of. So. White wine? Victory. Cheers? You guys? Uh, I, I do white wine. <laughs> Victory to all no. of you? I'm fine. No, no, I have to try it after ah. I finish excursion. Wow. So I can't. Ooh. It's amazing. This is very interesting. I kind of feel like in the back. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. I have worst tamada ever. Guys, you have to choose tamada first. Tamada has to say mm. toes and if you are drinking like cheers and drink, you look like an, just an alcoholic band. <laughs> <laughs> just joking. Uh, what is it? <laughs> Super I like, good. I feel like this wine, when you swallow it, it has a little bit of a taste of honey. Yeah, on the kind roof of. of your mouth. I don't know. I maybe it's just well. me. A maybe bit. because you are a very big fan of the honey. Yes. <laughs> said that he, Everything. <laughs> Everything tastes like honey to me, but this one tastes very, very good. And to me, it has a little taste of honey. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> maybe it's just me. I'm not drinking, but I will tell you the toast. Oh. So, my dear guests, first of all, it is really good to meet you. And uh, first of all, uh, I'm very lucky it, since morning I had these two amazing guests. Uh, they are Not interested. <laughs> no, you are. You are really amazing guys. First of all, uh, the mood of the guy depends what kind of guests he have. And when I see those people that they are interested, we had a walking tour first and we visited the monasteries. And I'm very grateful to them because they were interested what I was talking about and I felt excited about it. And uh, second of all, I had this kind of amazing couple here <laughs> and uh, I just uh, wanted to say that I'm sure that all of you have your wishes about uh, you have all of you all of you have your dreams and I wish you to your wishes come true. So cheers to it. Yeah. Cheers. cheers. <coughs> wish you all the best. Yeah. Yeah. But sorry, I can't yes. drink. Cheers. It's okay. You guys, we just had the most amazing meal here and the most amazing wine tasting as well. Sorry, the lighting is not the greatest here. I'm just arranging the bottles of wine that we tried here. Okay, let's see. So, we tried the red wine, which is called Guantas, Guantas wine. Um, we tried Bayas wine, where there are two uh, different ones. This one is made with uh, two types of grapes and this one is made with three types of grapes and to be honest out of these three wines me personally and Luke as well would recommend this type of wine here. It's Bayas wine, um, Ziska and Zolikori um, grapes. These wines by the way are exported to a lot of countries. Um, a lot of them are exported to the, uh, to England, for example, to Central Europe and Western Europe. And um, if you ever do see any of these types of wines in your local supermarket or in your local winery or something like that, please, please go and um, buy the wine, try it out. Um, also, when you do come to Georgia and you do come to Bayas Winery, um, you can buy all of these beautiful bottles here in the winery itself as well. And uh, Luke and I both have a little bit of a buzz now after trying all of these amazing wines. And to be honest, I know you only see the leftovers, but the food, oh my God, the food was so, so good. Um, if you ever come here, make sure um, to reach out to buy us wine or to Budget Georgia. They organized the tour that we are on right now. And um, you can easily reach out to them on Instagram or even online and just book the tour and come here with some tour guides and see the locals, um, interact with the locals. It's the most amazing experience ever. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much for your yeah. time. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming. Enjoy with your trip to the country. Thank you. Thank you. Madloba. Come back, please. Madloba, we will. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>
Ah, ah. Ah, Seeing Luke trying to squeeze in is the funniest <laughs> thing ever. <laughs> it's a tight squeeze. So that was an absolutely fascinating experience and a little bit of a look for you guys inside of a local Georgian winery. winery. Wow, what an absolutely fantastic experience. And we just want to say thank you very much to Budget Georgia for organizing this done, trip. <laughs> thank you so much, guys. <laughs> but um, for now, my name is Luke. My name is Naomi. We are the two mad explorers. And this is your madry. <laughs> And this is your reminder to keep exploring. I'm sorry, I'm on a buzz. And we'll see you guys in the next Georgian adventure. Madloba! Madloba! Bye bye! bye.